Hello and welcome to the UNICEF Africa podcast. My name is Patsy Nakel. In today's episode, we head to Zimbabwe, where adolescent girls and young women are empowering themselves with crucial information about HIV. The power of their approach lies in peer mentorship, which sees young people share life-saving information with each other. 1.3 million people in Zimbabwe are living with HIV today, and sadly, stigma remains a massive challenge. This sometimes prevents young people, particularly young mothers, from receiving reliable healthcare information. But now, thanks to a government and UN agency initiative, adolescent and young women are taking matters into their own hands. My colleague Nadia Sami visited young moms in the rural tobacco-growing area of Hurungwe and produced this podcast for us. Growing up in this place, I was always a sickly child. Here and there, I would not be feeling well. Until my parents took me to the clinic where I was tested for HIV and I was diagnosed with HIV. I was put on medication to prevent the spread of the disease. This is Grace Mutungambera. She's 18 years old and has lived in Hurungwe in northern Zimbabwe her whole life. She was diagnosed with HIV when she was 10 years old. Grace comes from a family of tobacco growers. But times are tough because Zimbabwe, like much of southern Africa, is caught in the grip of a severe drought. And the signs are apparent here. Agricultural fields stretch as far as the eye can see. But there are no signs of any harvest. Animals roam the streets thin, parched. Grace's family is feeling the pinch. They don't always have food. The seeds they planted have yielded nothing. And to make matters worse, the days feel hotter. Grace is a young mom and she often has to go to the local clinic. To get there, she has to walk 14 kilometers. That's about 9 miles each way. A one-way trip takes her about four hours. She does this three times a month, once to fetch her own medication, another day for her baby's appointment, and a third time to attend a support group for young mothers. The baby will be on my back. Sometimes my feet get painful. Sometimes I have backache, headaches because of the sun. But I have no choice. I have to be strong and make the effort because I need their assistance. The long distance Grace walks from her home to the clinic really strikes me. The dirt road is secluded. There is no place to rest or find refreshments. She's also at risk of wild animals that roam the area. But she's determined to get to the facility because that's where young mothers, just like herself, meet once a month. It's a safe space for moms living with HIV to make friends and gain support for themselves and their HIV-exposed babies. HIV prevalence among women at 16.7% is significantly higher than the prevalence among men, which is at 10.5%. At these groups, women are encouraged to talk about the issues that contribute to infection. Here, they discuss sexual and reproductive health, including the negotiation of condom use in this very patriarchal society. When you look at your friends and you look at girls and young women in the community, do you feel that they have the power to do things like negotiate the use of a condom or that they're able to speak out for their rights? Some of them they cannot. Their husbands actually refuse to use condoms for protection. Here's Kiara Pirati. She's the HIV and AIDS chief at UNICEF Zimbabwe. So one of the big issues is a stigma and discrimination. And we realize that uh, adolescents, they are the, one of the most difficult uh, uh, moments of the life of a person because you are really transitioning from a childhood when uh, you are very happy and all the parents are supportive and towards adult when you have a lot of expectation from uh, uh, parents and community but at the same time you are, your brain is still uh, young is not functional as an adult and especially this uh, a young girl become pregnant very soon and, and they are expected from the community and the family to act as a, a woman and uh, being able already to deal with the kids and with the house, but instead they are not yet ready to get this role. 
Faced with high HIV prevalence numbers, particularly amongst adolescents, the government of Zimbabwe looked at options to address this vulnerable age group as it was aware of stigma and discrimination in health facilities. In Harare, we spoke to Dr. Angela Mushavi, who is the National PMTCT and Pediatric HIV Care and Treatment Coordinator in Zimbabwe's Ministry of Health. She says the Mother to Mother Peer Program, presented by NGO Africa AIDS Mandiri, brought a solution. One of our challenges was in preparation for elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV and syphilis plan. We have a plan, uh, was a recognition that we were not doing a favor to the young adolescent moms and the youth moms. Really, I think when we see them in antenatal care, we manage them just like any other pregnant women. And that was identified as a weakness. And therefore, when we were looking at uh, strategies moving forward, we really thought we should address the needs of the pregnant adolescent. We felt that they needed to speak to one of their own so that they can really understand uh, what we are talking about, whether they are HIV positive or negative. So we looked at a situation where you could have a peer support mechanism. A young mother might say a lot more to another young mother. Exactly. Because I have a feeling that if they are looking at somebody like myself in a clinic setting, uh, whether they are having problems in their home, uh, they are n less likely to tell me than to tell someone younger. And not only that, somebody that they know is probably experiencing the same kind of situation as they themselves are going through. Back in a hot and dry Hurungwe, we're gathered in Grace's family home. The homestead consists of several small, neat mud houses and a chicken coop. We're sitting on the worn brown and red plaid couch in the family room. Grace has her infant girl in her arms, and she tells me that she'd always dreamt of being a teacher. But she left school after Form 4, and that dream never materialized. She also tells me about her brief marriage to the baby's father. I left this place and I went and eloped with my husband. At that time, I left my medication here and my mom, she actually followed with the medication. I then continued taking my medication. Then I started gaining weight. Then my husband said, you are now healthy and you have gained weight, so you should stop taking your medication. But I argued and I said I cannot stop taking my medication because this is what is keeping me alive for the rest of my life. And sometimes when it is my clinic appointment date, he would say you are not going there. And I actually threatened him and said, if it is like that, then I will actually go and report the matter to the police. And as time went on, I came back home. I can now take my medication again and attend my clinic appointments and am free to attend support groups because I don't have any problems or obstacles. Marlene Chigora is Grace's mentor mother. The two women see each other often either at the clinic or here at home. They're around the same age, and between them, no conversation is off limits. Grace can ask Marlene any questions she has about sex, breastfeeding, medication, or caring for her baby. And Marlene has been through extensive training to answer all these questions. When we started with Grace, she was having difficulty accepting her status and it was troubling her because she was a married woman. After we encouraged her, she took her medication and she took care of the baby. We asked her to also bring her husband. He came and he tested HIV negative. We then encouraged Grace to continue taking her medication and giving her baby medication. Grace listens attentively when we discuss everything with her, be it attending to support groups or how to take care of the baby. She listens attentively and is very cooperative.
This is Grace's dad, Martin Mutungambera. He's always supported his daughter and welcomed Grace back to his home with open arms when she decided to leave her husband. Mr. Mutungambera says over the years he's seen improvements in health care here in rural Hurungwe. The way it has changed is that we are taking our medication well. At the right time, we are given days when we must go and collect our medication, and we always get them. So for me and my family, we are living well. Uh, my name is Evelyn Mtetwa from Africaid Jandiri, and I'm the project coordinator for the Young Moms Project. Africaid is a local non-governmental organization that works with young people, 0 to 24, that are living with HIV, to enable them to live a happy, fulfilled lives, even though they are living with HIV. Paint a picture of Hurungwe. We, we saw the areas of space are quite wide apart. It's dusty, dirt roads. The area is extremely poor. There's a, the poverty rate is quite high. But continue and just paint a picture for me of what the area is like and the people who live there. It's an area where they do tobacco farming. And tobacco farming is characterized by, it's really a male-dominated area of farming. The women, the children, they participate in the farming, but they are not part of those that will actually benefit from the proceeds that you get from tobacco. There are a lot of, of stories whereby the gentlemen, after the harvest, they actually just take the money, pick another lady now who is going to benefit from that money, such that the area remains so poor. By the time they are coming back from the tobacco auction flows, they are actually very broke. That's the general trends. At the same time, there has been stories said that even if you look at the way they construct their houses, the girls' rooms or room hut is actually placed at the bit of an outskirt of the home homestead. And there has been stories that they let it, it's more like for easy access for boyfriends and, and all that. So it's really an area whereby it's dominated by the males. At the same time, you have these girls marrying very early to these older men, and there's a lot of gender-based violence, especially during those times when the tobacco starts to pay off. Then these women will also now start to cry for their dividends in this whole thing, and the males are saying it's theirs. So there's a lot of gender-based violence that then comes out, especially during the harvesting time when now they are selling the tobacco. So it's it's one of the areas that in terms of STIs, in terms of gender-based violence, in, ter in terms of teenage pregnancy, in terms of HIV, it's there. It appears this peer program is successful because it is community, information and relationship driven. Young moms here are having open and important conversations that they've never had before, particularly aimed at how they can protect themselves. But they still face an uphill battle, and stigma is one of their biggest problems. This is Tonde Murimwa. He's an HIV specialist at UNICEF Zimbabwe. Yes, the older generations, particularly in the rural areas, are still not open to discussing issues to do with HIV. But we think now with the information that we have given uh, both the young people and the old people, we should be able to stimulate discussions. It might not be easy discussions, but it allows for people to talk about the condition. It's uh, no longer a death sentence. We have life-saving treatment. So really, there's no reason why people shouldn't talk about it. Like everyone kind of needs to get out of their comfort zones, zones yeah. and actually engage in the discussion. Yes. Across the generational lines especially. Yes. There are some people who have school going children, but they can't help their children to take medication. The parents can't explain and instruct the children about how to take the medication. And when the children go to school, some other children laugh at them. There was a case where one child attempted committing suicide and was taken to the hospital. Dr. Solomon Mukung Unugwa works for the Zimbabwean Ministry of Health. He says the way people are made to feel when they seek out information is critical to the way they receive and use that information. Now, adolescents and young women who live in the areas where the project has been rolled out can ask questions about sexual and reproductive health in a non judgmental space, knowing that the mentor mother they're talking to has probably encountered the very same issue herself. 
So what we have seen uh, primarily in the population before introduction of the Young Mental Mother program is that most of the women that were transmitting HIV to their infants were those women that were uh, the young mothers, um, typically less than 24 years old. And there were so many other issues around why they were transmitting, um, not necessarily biological but also social and uh, family issues. And with the introduction of the Young Mental Mother program, what we have seen is that retention, adherence, in care has improved significantly. Meanwhile, Grace works hard to ensure her baby does not become infected. She adheres to her own medication and gives the baby her medicine on time. On the day we are visiting, a community nurse has come over to the house to check on the baby and administer her nine-month test. I just pricked the baby on the hill and it took some blood and then I put it on the uh, HIV test kit. Uh, the results are now out, now 15 minutes and they are negative. Yeah, she, she feels very happy because she gives the baby his medications just on time on daily basis and isn't that a beautiful note to end our podcast with this week the young mentor mothers initiative was made possible by the government of zimbabwe africades vandiri unicef and the joint un together for sexual and reproductive health and rights program with funding from the swedish government and do remember to listen to us uh, next time on the uh, UNICEF Africa podcast. And in the meantime, you can tell us what you think on our different social media accounts, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's UNICEF Africa on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Thanks for listening.